I was asked the other day about how I get transmissions out of Land Rovers. You know, how do I get them out? Well, it's a good question. It's the one job I actually hate doing is taking gearboxes out. So I thought, whilst I've got the floor and I'm still waiting for that plastic cover for mine, I thought I'd give you a few little tips, uh, because they are quite tricky to do. Uh, this is a sort of a, my uh, 300 TDI. But it's like a hybrid type thing because I've got the old 200, uh, the old 2.5 cross member in there, and I've got engine mountings that are welded to the frame from the Disco 2, so it's a bit of a mishmash, and it's got a Disco 2 prop shaft on. So anyway, one thing that I do when I take the gearboxes out, obviously you've got to take off this gear shift, but what I do as well is I take off this housing here because it makes life so much easier because when you've got the engine tipped back over to drop out this invariably hits here if you've got this out of the way and nine times out of ten you've got to take this off anyway just to get um, to your transfer case so what I do take this bolt out of here clip off there 13 mil bolt get rid of that this here um, 10 or 8 millimeter move that out of the way undo these four bolts, in fact you don't even have to do that thinking about it because if you're going to take this off leave that on undo these four bolts and then you can get access to pull this pin out you see just undo that clip here once this is up leave it and then you don't even have to adjust that yeah that's another way to do it um, <clears throat> so yeah get that bit off um, I don't know, I always end up taking the tunnels off for some reason because, uh, you know, setting this, if you're just taking the transfer case off, for example, setting this back up is a pain, so it's only a few screws and a bit of carpet to take out. Now, this is a 300 TDI. The 2.5 is a little bit different. It's a bit, uh, you know, not the 2.5, well, yeah, the 2.5 and the 200 TDI is a little bit different. Uh, you have to take the floor out to get to the bell housing bolts, so you have no choice, really. So that's that. I'm sorry I'm rushing a bit because I'm, I'm just supposed to be plastering my bathroom. Um, this pin here is a very important little pin if you look down there because this with the handbrake on and the, the transmission all complete you can put a chain on there and that is its nice balance point. When you pull that gearbox off everything will balance together. So you can put a chain on there, pull the gearbox off and then drop it down on the floor. Now you can use an elephant hoist, you know, the, um, an engine crane, that'll pull it off. That's an easy thing to do. But I'm going to go in the shop now and show you um, my lift and uh, transmission jack and you'll understand a little bit more. In my shop I have this Max Jack um, in a vehicle lift. And it's up to, it lifts up to £6,000, so it lifts the Land Rover quite easily. But one thing you've got to watch with this is that um, once you start moving engines and gearboxes and taking them out, you can shift the point of balance, which could be uh, naughty. And these are made in China, not the States like I thought they were. So when it comes to hydraulics, I don't trust Chinese hydraulics as far as I could throw them. But it does work to lift it up. So what I'll show you next is the stands I use for supporting a vehicle. These are the stands that I use. Um, they're made out of two inch angle at the bottom. And what's that? That's about an inch, inch yeah, I don't think it's an inch and a half, I think it's an inch and a quarter round tubing. And a flat plate on the top with a couple of guides on the top. And they are about waist height, just, just about your waist height, so just a nice size. So you're not, when you're working under a vehicle, you're not overstretching, but it gives you plenty of room to get engines and gearboxes out. What I do is, I lift up the car on the hoist, the, the, the vehicle hoist, and I put them under this car, under, under the uh, chassis. If I'm using them under the axle, I strap the axles with a ratchet strap, so they can't move. But then, I also put stands under the bumper here, and here and that's ample strong enough like I say once you, once you start pulling engines and boxes out 
on a two post hit lift like a Chinese one I, I just I think this just too risky so let me go and have a show you now what uh, my transmission jacks like so this is my transmission jack it's a, a nice wide jack it lifts up to sort of I don't know year height but it's nice when you're using the stands outside you can use this in conjunction because I knocked this up all out of scrap now I looked around to try and buy a proper Land Rover piece and it was so expensive I decided just to make one <clears throat> these three bolts bolt onto the bottom of the transmission so what you do is you you go underneath and bolt it through like that and uh, over the years I've been <laughs> modifying it this is for a, a so you can put the 300 TDI in and get the cross member out and this was notched out for some other vehicle I can't remember what it was <clears throat> but I've also got it so that I made this plate as well to re you know so the bolts here pick up off here and then you can take a transfer case out without too much trouble because they are heavy and they are awkward to get out but that's what I use uh, that's what I use now and it's quite easy really it's uh, it's a nice little jack I'd, um, I, I don't really see all that many I, it's not like a trolley jack it, because it's got all the adjusters uh, for tipping it this way and this way which is really helpful when you can get get in a, a gearbox bolts to line up so that's what I've got so I hope this is only a quickie it was just in a, re a reply to somebody asked me how I do um, uh, replace transmissions in the old days I used to use my forklift and just used to use that pickup bolt put it through the window with my big expen uh, through the door with my big uh, extension bar uh, on the fork and then just drop them up and down but again they were on stands first so that made life a lot easier so I hope you find that a little bit uh, informative and if you've got any questions just ask I'll uh, see if I can answer um, if you want to make one of these things it is quite easy to make because you can take a paper template off the bottom of the gearbox, that's what I did with this, you know, get the, the, the bolt pattern right. This angle here, well, I think that's irrelevant because you can tip it on your jack anyway. This one, all you have to do is take, it, take the cover off your transfer case, transfer the holes over. Now what you do is you drill these holes big enough so that the bolts here fit through the holes like that. Because you've got uh, another uh, six, uh, three bolts at the top of here and three bolts at the bottom. You keep those in, you take the four middle ones out and then you bolt this to your transfer case and lo and behold it'll drop out and it'll drop out nice and square. Hey, no more tears. Yeah, I've struggled on for years without making that. <laughs> and that's all it is, look. A bit of angle. Easy. Anyway, yeah, I hope, you, I hope that's interesting. So if you've got any problems, let me know, and I'll see if I can uh, be of a bit more help.